Hey guys, what's going on? It's your good buddy Sam, and it's time for some more Max. Uh, let's make some more progress building our, what it really isn't fair to call a TB303, but some kind of synthesizer type thing. Um, let's see, last time we were here we built this little part here that decided whether or not we would slur from note to note, and I kept calling it legato when it's not called legato, it's called... Portamento? I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we're gonna get it right. So, let's see. Yeah, sorry if in that last video I seemed a little bit sleepy. I'd just gone and bought um, a whole bunch of Guinness because I'd forgotten that I hate Guinness and then had a whole bunch of it to drink and then decided to make a tutorial. And um, it, I, <laughs> it was a mistake. And um, much like my first child, I regret it. But no more of talking about that. Let's get down to building this thing. So, uh, maybe today, let's see, we finished this part deciding whether or not we should portamento. And now, um, let's... Do let's build this part here, the part where we um, either where we make our uh, make some sound. So out of this thing, we know whether or not we should slur from one note to the next. Um, and out of I intended out of this outlet here in the middle, that's where our notes. Where we're actually going to start playing a note. So let's just go ahead and make a um, saw tilde. And saw tilde, you'll this will blow your mind. Makes a sawtooth wave. Um, I think we've talked about this before. So. Out of this guy, what we all we're going to do is whenever this is a note, um, a note on, we're going to set the frequency of this sawtooth wave here. And when this thing decided we should slur, we'll slur into the next note. Otherwise, we'll just jump to it. Um, so we'll make a line tilde object to handle that slurring action. Um, sounded like a weird racist porn. Let's see. So this will come into here, and. Um, so let's take the output of this should slur here and we'll make it, um, oh let's see, that's going to bang, what did this thing do? We had it, uh, oh okay, so it's outputting a bang whenever the output here is a 1, but I actually, we've changed our mind, I don't want that, I just want it to be 0 when we shouldn't slur and 1 when we should slur. So that'll come out of there, um, I'll multiply that by, and here's where we decide how much, how long it's going to take to slur from note to note. Um, is it called a slur? Slide. How long is it going to take to slide from note to note? Um, so for now, let's just make it 250 milliseconds. It'll be a nice long slur, so we'll, we'll know we got it right when it happens. Uh, so that'll come out of here. Multi we don't want to multiply tilde, just want to multiply. Um, we'll make an uh, pack object, pack float float. Um, and send that into here. Uh, out of here is going to come a MIDI event uh, of the form frequency followed by um, note on or off. So we'll just do strip note, so we're only handling uh, note ons. And then out here is the frequency, we'll use a MIDI to frequency object to get frequency from the MIDI send the frequency into this pack object. This whole thing is becoming really messy. Uh, God, sometimes, Max, sometimes, I just don't know. I don't know why I can't quit you. You do shit like this. All right, so that goes into pack. Hopefully this, so hopefully this is making sense now. The MIDI comes out here. We strip for MIDI note ons only. Um, send the frequency into here. If we should have slurred, we're going to be sending a message that's frequency followed by 250 milliseconds, because this will be a one. Otherwise, we multiply zero by 250, get a zero, and so we won't slur, uh, sorry, won't slide from note to note. Um, that goes into line, and that should be it. So let's make a gain and an easy deck, which I do so often, it really should be like, one key to do it. And I think there is a way to set that up, but whatever, another video. All right, so now we should hear a really irritating series of notes with a slide at the couple places where um, you should see a slide. And we'll just put a cell one and a button here. Um, or, no, let's make an LCD. An LCD? No, an LED. So now this will light up um, when you should see some slurring or sliding. All right, see if this works. Ah, uh, did you hear it? That's awesome, we did it. All right, so we've got sliding working and it only took four minutes. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, actually, I'm relatively impressed with that. Let's try again. Huh, 
that's cool. Wow. All right. So enough self-aggrandization. Um, let's take this whole ugly chunk here. Let's get rid of this. Take this whole ugly chunk here. Let's um, go ahead and put a float box here so we can pick what our uh, slide time should be. Later on we'll attach that to a dial or something um, so it will look, it'll look a bit sexier, but for now we can just leave this the way it is. Um, cool, okay, let's go ahead and encapsulate all that and we'll just call this um, slide master and that's how we'll know what that thing does. It slides from note to note. Sweet, so we've gotten taken care of the frequency picker. Oh, and let's just go ahead and make a rect here. Someone pointed out in a comment, uh, uh, they made a very good point. The, um, the actual circuit in the TB303 that picks whether or not you're dealing with a sawtooth wave or a, rect a square wave doesn't output an actual square wave. It outputs something funny, uh, some kind of funny square wave-like thing based on the sawtooth wave. But I couldn't find um, any documentation on how that works. So for now, we'll just leave it a rectangle wave or square wave. And if somebody wants to let me know how that should actually be, that would be, um, would be very helpful. Uh, so to pick between saw and rectangle, we'll make a select uh, selector tilde object, give it the arguments two and one so that it's a sawtooth wave. This means uh, the first argument here means how many different sounds you're selecting between and this argument is which one it's is on by default. So um, sawtooth wave will be on by default and we can make uh, I don't know let's just make a let's make a radio group for now um, and you can toggle between these and we'll call this one saw and we'll call this one square. Make them a lot smaller. Uh, scooch this one up here. Sweet. Oh, look at that. Okay. Um, I think this is going to be one for the f no zero and one. Okay, so we add one. And that'll be one and two now, and that'll toggle between our square wave and our sawtooth wave. So let's bring back the gain and easy deck that I got rid of. And just make sure this works. Nope, 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 nope. And let's see if we can go, go between those two. Okay, cool. Uh, looks like it is working. So now we can pick between saw and rectangle wave. We are making amazing progress, which is not surprising because we are amazing people, all of us, mankind. All right, so we've got the MIDI coming in still. Okay, now let's, let's deal with the envelope. Um, another uh, good point that someone mentioned is that TB303 actually has two envelopes. Um, I don't know, if I knew how to use those, we would do that. Um, so yeah, let me know, and, and, and if uh, I can figure out how to incorporate two envelopes, you know, we'll do that. Um, but for now, let's just pretend as if there's one envelope. Um, okay, so to get the envelope, we're of course going to use um, an ADSR. Um, not because we're not creative, but because that's the best way to do it, man. And we'll, of course, be able to set the attack, decay, sustain, and release later. Um, for now, I'll just make, I don't know, 10, 10, um, 0 0.6, and 200. Those are reasonable values. So what we need to do now is um, start the ADSR when we've got a note on and stop it when we've got a note off. And one thing that I think would be useful to configure here, see, I can't remember how this works. Um, we need to make sure legato is zero on the ADSR. Um, hmm. I don't know what legato is. So legato means that when you trigger a new envelope, um, it, it just ramps up from the old value rather than starting from zero. And I think we'll be happier if we don't do that. Um, whatever, let's not worry about it. All right, so the note comes out of here. And what we want to do now is distinguish note ons from note offs, and especially distinguish note offs that we care about from note offs that we don't. Um, so to do that, every time we get a note on, um, we want to remember its frequency. So uh, let's make uh, unpack integer integer. Uh, make a gate to one. 
So now we're sending the, um, this is so we can send the frequency to one of two different places depending on whether or not we're dealing with note on or note off. Um, cell zero. So out of the um, left inlet here will be bangs for note offs. Now the right outlet here will be um, bangs for note ons. Um, so we'll send, oops, we'll send something out the left outlet of this gate in the event of a note on and out the right outlet, sorry, let me out the left outlet in the event of a note off and out the right outlet in the event of a note on. Um, and in the event of a note on, we want to have an equals equals box here and send that frequency into the um, left inlet, uh, le right inlet of the equals equals here so that um, this is what we're going to use to test whether or not we care about our note uh, note ons or not, note offs rather. How much time do we have left? Uh, not a lot. Okay, so let's finish this quickly. Um, <laughs> Q pause. So uh, when we get a note off, it will come out, the frequency value will come out here, and if it's equal to this guy, then we want to trigger a note off. So cell one, and then message zero, and that will turn off our ADSR. Just sweet. Look at that. Um, come on, drop down. Out of the way. Okay, and then in the event of a note on, however, we want to trigger a um, an on event here. I think this should work. This looks like it will work, and therefore probably won't. Um, but anyway, let's multiply the ADSR by the uh, note coming out here. Now we've got envelope sound. Let's just make sure it works. Okay, so part of why this is not working <laughs> is because we're still playing the MIDI notes out here. Uh, so let's just stop that for now. And I turn the volume off. Oh, I got it backwards. Um, I got it backwards. These these are note um, offs and these are note ons. Uh, so yeah, this is dumb. This should be this. Did I get it wrong? Let's see. In the event of a note off, a note on. No, I had it right. Let's see. Note comes in here. In the event of a note off. Hope you guys aren't screaming at your computers right now. In the event of a note off, send a one here, so this note comes out, and these are note offs. Yeah, I got it backwards. Okay, let's make this a two and this a one. No wonder it sounded so weird. Let's try again. Much better. All right, one more time. Fantastic. Everything is working. The world is a beautiful place. Um, we've made a delicious sound, restored order and um, peace to the Egyptian people, and fed everybody in the African subcontinent. So good job, everybody. We did it. Um, just out of time, and yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial, which I may do right now. We'll see.